All right, welcome back. This is chapter 12 of CSIS 2200, Managing Information Systems. And in chapter 12, we're gonna talk about manage support systems. So this chapter really focuses around managing information systems to support management. So for the most part of this course, we've talked primarily about managing information systems as it pertains to um, the operational uh, structure within organizations. And now we're gonna look at the management uh, support. So we're gonna focus in on systems that are dealing around uh, decision-making processes for upper management. So some of you may be uh, eventually working in that area or you might be supporting that area. So you need to know what the different systems are and how you can fit into these, what they look like. Maybe you want to do one of these for your uh, research project. So we'll look at uh, decision support systems. This is a D, what they refer to as a DSS or an executive information system, group support system. Now, geographic information system uh, is uh, uh, kind of a specialty one because it's looking at uh, mapping and uh, the demographics. It's a very specialized niche type. I mean, most companies wouldn't really use this to any great degree, except for doing things like where their market is coming from or demographics of their their customers, et cetera. Uh, management support systems would be another one. So these are all different types or variations of decision-making uh, systems that management can use. So in this course and this week, I would encourage you guys as one of your assignments is to complete the LinkedIn learning. Uh, there is a really good uh, one called decision-making strategies. This also explains it. It's only 47 minutes it's it's a easy watch but there's a lot of really good nuggets in here um, and it looks good on your linkedin profile all right let's get into the decision uh, like how do companies make decisions and what kind of decisions and the terminology and stuff like that let's get around that so decision making determines whether the company or an individual will be successful or not which makes sense your decisions uh whether they're good or bad are going to make sure you're going to be uh, promoted or if you're going to be rewarded or if you're going to make a commission or, or whatnot. Now, I'm not sure who said it, but a good quote is decision making is the process of selecting from a list of choices. Uh, interesting, eh? Uh, to achieve that specific goal or objective. So hopefully when you're making decisions, you've got multiple choices and that's why management, they pay them the big bucks because they have to make a choice and that cho based on that choice is going to have the consequences. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to make, of course, the best possible choice or decision an organization for a particular uh, issue that we're, we're looking at. So in doing that, we've got to um, start off sort of with the basic ideas. There's three types of decision making um, that we can go with. Now, let's take a look at these structured, semi-structured and totally unstructured decision making. Structured decision making. Uh, well, let's get into these in, in a little more detail here. All right. So structured decisions. Um, this you see these within almost all major organizations in the form of a standard operating procedure. This means when decisions need to be made on a repetitive basis, a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis, when companies need to do something, they tend to write out a procedure or policy that guides uh, employees or new employees on how to make decisions based on constant uh, events that they need to um, make a decision on. These are what they sometimes refer to as an automated uh, decision structure because there is a structure involved. There is an, what they call an SOP. You'll hear this term a lot. This is an acronym you need to know, Standard Operating Procedure. Uh, this is going to help automate these decisions. If you don't have a standard operating procedure, that means that there's going to be a semi decision or unstructured decisions that has to be made by individuals within the company. It'll be based on their knowledge about how to proceed and they could make mistakes, which could be costly. Uh, so standard operating procedures is one of the, the easiest ways companies can create sort of a scaffolding or structure to how decisions are made. So these are known as programmable decisions or tasks, I guess, because they are in almost like an algorithm where it's step one, do this. If that happens, do that and so on. Now, following company SOPs uh, is 
is part of the company's policy. These SOPs were laid out by senior management. They get reviewed by committees, by stakeholders, and they get um, agreed upon, voted upon as the structures that people need to follow. Now, what I've done is uh, gone into the um, uh, Douglas College. And here's an example. I mean, it's easy because Douglas College has lots of standard operating procedures for a variety of things. Now, you guys can access this under our governance page under policies. And it gives you a list of standard operating procedures for decisions that need to be done. For example, if you want to bring an animal on campus. So if you want to bring your pet from home, can you do that? A decision has to be made. Well, there's a policy, a standard operating procedure. So you can click on this and read through whether or not you can bring in your your uh, you know your pet dog into the college so they've got rules and regulations and very very detailed of how and this is why they call it a structured decision because everything here is organized and almost virtually or should have every question or possibility or every scenario would be listed in here so you can imagine uh, what this policy would contain you probably can't bring your own personal cat into class uh, but uh, you might be able to bring in a uh, helper dog. If you are visually impaired, you could bring in a CNI dog. Or if you need a helper or support dog, you might be able to bring in something like that. But there are rules as well. So you'll need to go through and says, well, there it is right there. You're, you're, uh, but not limited to, okay, uh, right. So it really depends. There is flexibility and you can go through the standard operating procedure. So if a decision needs to be made, if someone comes and says, can I bring my pet to class? They can go and they can, they can cite the structured decision support system in our standard operating procedure as it pertains to animals on campus. So this is a very, very important um, concept. And uh, I'm sure some of you have already been aware of how standard operating procedures work. Uh, and maybe you'll be involved in writing or helping to write or contributing to writing to these uh to these basically they're the like company policies now it might not be just a standard operating procedure your company might have sort of guidelines on how it handles certain things uh certain type of business processes for example let's say there's a company that's trading with another company in, in another country or Canada and US, let's say. And of course we we're trading and, and there's money involved. We need to you know, check. And one of those things we check is the exchange rate. Do we purchase the product from the United States or maybe a, a, a Canadian company? We have to have a consideration. So one of the structured decisions could be that if the US and the Canadian dollar is let's say at, uh, more than $1.30, Canadian to, for an American dollar, then stop buying the inventory from company A and buy it from company B because it might be a Canadian company, might be might be better value, might be the same product, for example. So this is a, sort of a very small kind of example of a structured decision a company could implement to save the money. Now, that's a big decision. You're going to stop buying a product from company A uh, and start buying from company B. Well, that means that company B is going to start making profit in company A. So this policy that was set out by management, I assume, has structured this because they want to protect their own uh, profits, possibly. It's just a, a small example of how we can create another structured decision. Now, that is a rule. If you think about it, if, if you've taken a programming course or if you've done a lot of like Microsoft Excel, you'll understand that this is basically a, a rule um, that you can write into your managing the information system, like let's say an Excel spreadsheet or into some other system that when you're purchasing, check to make sure that the dollar is over $1.30. If it is, if that's true, then go to company B, not company A, for example. So you need to understand what these rules are so you can help write these inside of some managing information system, or at least be able to know where they are or maybe to, to change them. The rule might be there, it might be structured already, but that they might change the rule and say, look, if it drops to $1.28, then buy from company B, for example. Uh, so there, that's kind of a very small example, but I hope it gives you an idea of what a structured decision would be. Now, there could be external variables that are not controlled by the company. And, and that's this is a good example. 
you know, we don't control the U.S. and the Canadian dollar rate. This is extremely external. It's a variable we cannot control. So therefore, we need to put in some kind of a structured decision mechanism to handle that external variable force. So uh, the lowest sale. Oh, here's another example. Um, kind of a maybe a uh, kind of a, a famous example in British Columbia by a famous entrepreneur businessman called Jimmy Pattison. He implemented a structured decision within his organizations when it came to salespeople. He put out a rule that said the lowest sales performer for the month is fired. That was his structured decision. So what that did and what it created within the company was it made every salesperson within the company trying to compete and make more sales than the other guy because the lowest one at the bottom of the pole was fired. And that was an internal variable. This is controlled by the company. This is the president of the company that made that decision. And as a result, which it sounds like a very brutal structured decision, uh, that particular Jimmy Patterson made a lot of money and is one of the richest uh, businessmen in uh, Canadian history. And one of the reasons for that is because of the structured decision that he made when it came to uh, sales performances. All right, now let's move on to the next one, which is called semi-structured decisions. So semi just means it's not perfectly structured. It doesn't have, there could be some parts that aren't structured. And normally that's because there could be a variable, a component to this. Every decision would be structured, but there could be some kind of variance uh, that could influence the decision within the structure. So this would include structured aspects that benefit from information retrieval. So information can change, data can change, and as that data changes, uh, we can make we can apply that to a structure and make different decisions based on the variance, the information that changes. So we could do that with analytical modeling. We could do that with business intelligence. For example, we've talked about forecasting with business intelligence and information system technologies. So when you're working with certain managing information systems, you can usually generate some type of analytical models based on the information and the data that you're collecting within the, the MIS system to help forecast uh, for to make a decision. Now that's why they call it a semi-structured decision because the data, the analytics will change, but based on the data, you usually have some kind of mechanism, some kind of structured scaffolding to make that decision on what you're going to do. All right, let's look at an example. So down here, we've got this chart. And this is our variance data. This is how data is changing. So we're coming up into 2021 and they maybe they forecasted out what they're anticipating um, the data is going to be based on other analytics. So the company's data and you know analyzes and indicates that the trending sales will increase in the year 2021. And therefore we should order more inventory. So therefore means because based on the data, we have a formula in our structure. So that really between the semi and the structure would happen right here. Uh, the, the data, the sales are indicating, it's helping us to make the decision. So therefore we should order the inventory. You probably have seen companies um, like Amazon and you're going and you're searching for a product and it says sold out and you want it. Well, think about that. A company did not make the correct decision. They did not anticipate the forecast for that product, the demand for the product. That means they're not going to make a sale. You might've bought that product if it was in stock, but somebody or within, within their, you know, their, their system, they didn't have the analytics. They didn't have the foresight and they didn't make a good decision to order that product because they're going to lose a sale and a sale lost. That means profit lost and it adds up. So the point there, is that within semi-structured decisions, you need an alternative, you need an, an extra variable um, component that fits with the structured decision. And that variance could be an analytical model, information that changes over a certain amount of time. And this is a really good example of when you're forecasting, because you're looking at over time 
and then you can per, do a projection and you can see how this line is you know going consistently going up you could make a conclusion or you know a, a you know therefore you can say that we're going to have more sales now that's a very one-dimensional analysis uh, example here i'm sure if this was a real uh, decision structure you would want to have multiple analysis multiple known performance indicators to help you decide on where the projection would really go but that's where you guys come in when you guys are working with your managing information systems you're going to be collecting data organizing data in a sense doing some business intelligence some analytics to help come up with that and the more that you can think of the more that you can questions you can answer and do projections that weren't thought of before the more value valuable you're going to be as an employee using the, that technology all right let's move on to the third uh, decision structure which is unstructured decisions unstructured decisions exactly what it says a decision that has no real formal base it's a one-time usually decision uh, they don't develop a standard operating procedure because this is such a rare type of event that um, that needs to happen unstructured decisions tend to come from upper management but they can come from all levels it depends on the type of decision that needs uh, and how important it is so the decision makers you know uh, they, they play that very important role as information technology and MIS systems don't provide any real information that decision makers can use. So they're gonna make uh, a decision primarily based on their own personal uh, experience, judgment, knowledge, bias, etc. cetera. So, uh, and that's really why management, and, and in a lot of cases why management gets paid a lot of money because these unstructured decisions that come up that they have to make a call on, um, you know, has huge impact sometimes. I mean, you could imagine, um, you know, when when the, the uh, coronavirus was announced and that these top decision makers at all these different levels have to start making decisions on, you know, to shut down an economy to uh, lock people down. I mean, there's such a, it's such a massive decision that has to be made based on what? It's their judgment, it's their evaluation. At the time, they didn't have a lot of data. They didn't have a lot of research to get that, in, to, to make that decision. So some of these extremely large decisions have to come down to, to almost to personal judgment. Now the doctors were saying, well, this could be, you know, like previous, and they can look at in the past or with comparables, but again, that's their own personal judgment or their knowledge. And in a lot of cases, they've got to roll the dice because they don't really have enough information. They're going to try to make the best decision that they can. Now, an example of another one of these large decisions is Steve Jobs of Apple. Um, you know, his decision to create the iPhone. Now, when he sat, sat down at a board meeting and said, look, I've made a decision. I want to create a new product called the iPhone. Well, what what an incredible uh, direction that one decision, that unstructured decision took the company. I mean, it basically launched it into one of the largest companies in the world. At the time it was a, you know, maybe it was worth a couple billion dollars and now it's worth in the trillion um, valuation for the company. So thousands of times of its valuation was done when a uh, top executive made that decision to make a new product that was, you know, that revolutionized an industry. So these decisions, these unstructured decisions can be at, at a monumental level, but they can also be at a granular level from a, an operational aspect. Um, somebody comes in and you're, uh, at, and you're serving a client, there could be a, a very unique situation where you'll be given some kind of a, you know, leeway to make a decision, probably not a lot. Uh, the decisions that people are granted tend to fall within a hierarchical structure. And we'll talk about that in another slide coming up here. Well, here it is right here. So within a, uh, within the pyramid, within the structure of an organization, you know, we've got that, that top sort of uh, strategic grouping of people, the managers, and we've got the, you know, the, the tactic, type of uh, the well the tactile management 
uh, people, the middle management, I call them. And then we have the rest of us, the operational people that run a business. So within each of these main groupings, we've got all three different decision structures that can occur. So, um, you know, you can have a look at examples of these. I've given some examples of, of, you know, the top, definitely of the top strategic management, but the bottom one here, like an unstructured management might be setting the queue priority for printing a job. Very low impact on a company, but as an operational person, you could make an unstructured decision to just say, okay, I need to get this printed and I'm just going to do it because there's an emergency or, you know, there's a customer waiting. I'm just going to do it without asking anybody's permission. So there are unstructured decisions, but the thing is we need to keep in mind that uh, there's limits to each of these levels and there's usually constraints of what we're allowed uh, and what level of decision making that we have authority to to do um so this is a very interesting graph when it comes to decision structure it kind of sums up the whole thing uh, let's pick another one here uh structured when it comes to middle management usually middle management organizes departmental budgets and that tends to be a very structured process there are budget items in that are predefined that are that are ongoing very structured and when preparing and deciding how much money to assign to a particular line item uh, this is very very structured um, when it comes to unstructured an example could be uh, resolving a conflict between two individuals or two groups or two divisions uh, this might have to be handled by management middle management has to make a, a resolution maybe you have two employees that are, have a conflict middle management would have to stand step in and they would have to make a personal judgment on that so the bottom line here is unstructured you're, you're probably dealing with less information uh it's personal judgment and experience but with structured you're dealing with the managing information systems more so now with semi-structured again you're still working with those to provide information but based on the information, different decisions can be made. All right. So I hope that's kind of clear in how these different uh, decision structures are um, laid out and how they're laid out with different levels of management. Again, you've got that S for strategic, the top, the CEOs, those top management. Then you've got your working managers, the managers of the departments. Uh, and then you've got the operational people that actually run uh, the majority of the, the daily tasks in managing information systems. And within each of those, of course, you've got your three levels of decision structures. All right. So that's probably enough for this video. I will uh, stop it here and I will see you in part number two.